I'm Dr. Anna Kislitsina, and today I'm going to give a lesson to my student, Michael Ru. Michael is 16 years old, and uh, he has been studying with me for about eight years at the Neri Berman School of Music. Michael is a winner of multiple international competitions, and today he's going to play Alia Albenius. This is the piece written by the 20th century composer Radion Chidrin. Chidrin got inspired by the Spanish composer Albenius and he imitates his style in this piece. This piece was dedicated to Maya Plisetska, great ballerina, and she was a wife of um, Radion Shedrin. Michael, could you please play for us? artistry. I love your sense of rubata together with dance-like rhythms. I know that you are doing this piece with ballet dancers and uh, I could vi visualize uh, the dancing patterns while you're playing. This piece is written in three parts and in, in three episodes. But in addition to these main sections, there are multiple little sections, little episodes. Shedrin puts multiple signs for this, for example, firmata. And uh, it reminds me the uh, art of Picasso, because there are many fragments in this piece, and you don't know what what is next, what is the next fragment. So I would suggest to consider this firmata signs, these transitions, uh, differently, not always with the same timing. And uh, sometimes they stop abruptly. You can take a little bit of more time to prepare the next episode, because the next episode is always a surprise. It, uh, we don't expect it. So maybe we could start from Menamosa. <laughs> Then 
next one would be here at the end of the page. Just always intriguing the audience, what is the neck? Do you want to try Menomosa starting uh, from second page, second line? Yeah, and you can do even more time in between. Like the moment of silence. So don't rush this moment. Yeah, nice. Then other episode would be the last measure of this on this page. So try to connect this. So there are many episodes like this, and it's always a surprise. What is the next one? So try to take more time, and the amount of time can be different in between sections. The other thing I wanted to consider is uh, chords, uh, representation of guitar style. And in the beginning, these chords are just simple chords for guitar, but in the middle uh, part, quasi guitar. Uh, these chords become melodic like. So let's see if we can treat them differently uh, and if we can imitate guitar style even better with this kind of pizzicata sound. Let's check the chords first, and then we can check the rubata section. It sounds good. Make sure all notes sound equally. Let's check the rubata section. The guitar has more leading and uh, individual role. This section, I love this section because it is very different from all these repeated chords which were written in the beginning. And this uh, part has three different textures. On one side we have this uh, arpeggios from guitar, on the other side we have this melodic line in the right hand. would be this long nose. They connect everything. And uh, I wonder if you could play these three textures in slightly different timing. It says tem uh, sempre rubata. So the melodic line is a little bit more relaxed and more lyrical. guitar part has crescendo and more energy because it always arrives to sforzando. Have more freedom and just treating all these different textures with 
different character. Keep listening to the low note so you would continue every time. Let's try again. speed up in the same way. This will also give you longer phrase. Uh, talking about long notes, I also wanted to uh, point to this interesting detail. Uh, Shijin doesn't suggest pedaling here, but at the same time, there are many long notes which almost have function of the pedal. And he mostly emphasizes the same note uh, mostly he emphasizes E. And we have to do multiple different tricks, switching fingering in order to keep holding at uh, the note and uh, playing the chords with uh, staccato uh, articulation. And uh, here, also low notes sustain the phrase and uh, in this part's rhythmica it is also E. Uh, I'm wondering if you could listen to these long notes even better so they uh, don't disappear when you play energetic texture. Let's check this uh, page 7 rhythmica part. is here. It sounds pretty nice. Um, he uses different attributes of the Spanish music and the uh, quasi-guitar, so we know that it, uh, this is the imitation of guitar style. But these rhythmic parts are very different from guitar style. I believe this is the imitation of castanets. I think we could play more percussively for this uh, episode. <laughs> Using also dynamic uh, which was suggested here. So the first uh, episode with castanets uh, is pianissimo, and then there is a crescendo. The other one starts with sforzando and then uh, fades away. And this one has opposite one, right? This is the like effect of distance. Something comes closer and then disappears. Do you want to try this? Oh, nice. So this is definitely an imitation of... Yeah, great. Let's try the one with Sforzando, the second one. Having this effect of disappearing and starting louder. So the, the sound is more percussive, imitating castanets.
Yeah, sounds good. Uh, the other thing about the form, I uh, this piece is really well written and it is so well balanced with the different characters and images. Um, the opening sounds very loud and uh, very bright and there is certain arch through the composition. The recapitulation is written in a vice versa style because uh, the chords uh, finish the composition. I'm wondering if it could be, Marcatissimo would be even brighter. And uh, maybe not with the amount of sound, but just with the sense of finalizing the piece. This one is with this sense of opening the piece. And then the last one, um, like finishing with triumphant um, emotions. Do you want to try just the Marcatissimo section, the end?